Hey Conspiracy, welcome to the Learned Lemurs YouTube channel. I'm John, the owner of the Learned Lemur, and today we're going to talk about ethics and oddities collecting. So one of the most common questions I get asked is if my skulls are ethically sourced. And some of the points we're going to go across today are going to teach you how to pick out a really good skull that fits with your personal ethics. A lot of these opinions today are going to be my personal opinion. And depending on how you want to collect and what kind of ethics you want to adhere to, hopefully this video will give you some information towards that. So we're going to be focusing a lot on skulls today. But a lot of the points we're going to get across also adhere to pelts and wet specimens and pretty much any natural history except for really fossils. A really good place to start out is nature find skulls. Animals die every day in the wild, either from predation, natural causes, disease, or even injury. However, nature find skulls probably won't always be your best quality skulls. If you're looking for a really good quality skull and a nature find skull, it's going to be pretty tough. Wild animals are opportunists, so they're going to look for a food source anywhere they can. Even rodents are going to chew on bone, remove teeth, and even drag parts far away from one another. If you're looking for a perfect skull, you're probably not going to find one in nature. Although, it's not unheard of. If someone's selling you a skull that looks like this, and telling you it's a nature find, you should probably think twice. And it's really easy to lie about the ethics of a skull. Like, for example, Hey man, is this skull ethically sourced? Uh, yeah. While nature find skulls, and even roadkill skulls, can be a beautiful addition to your collection, they're not always going to be in the best shape. Unfortunately, the better the skull, the more questions you're going to have to ask to get to the root of the ethics of the skull. So if someone's telling you that their skull is very ethical because it was a nature found skull, or even a roadkill skull, here's some things to look for. Roadkill skulls traditionally have a pretty significant amount of damage. I have seen skulls come in in pretty good shape from roadkill, but it's not common. Nature find skulls will have signs of predation. Rodents will chew on the bones and even remove the teeth. Antlers are a favorite choice for rodents to chew on, so you'll almost always see damage from rodents if it's truly a nature find. So with a roadkill skull, traditionally an animal that passes away from being hit by a car is going to have a lot of damage done to its body. That damage can vary from cracks, breaks, missing teeth, even completely shattered skulls that have been glued back together. With nature find skulls, we can even see damage from freezing temperatures. If there's any kind of brain tissue left in the skull itself, when it freezes at night or in the middle of winter, it can even crack the skull wide open. You're going to see some pretty unique damage from nature find skulls. So, I know what you're thinking. Trappers. Awful. Terrible. Basically just trophy hunters. Well, let me see if I can change your mind. So you may notice in your neighborhood that you're starting to see a lot of rabbits and squirrels and raccoons and possums. And this kind of activity starts to attract the attention of predators. And the predators start to move into the cities and the towns. And while a lot of these animals do a pretty good job at creating enough babies to keep the predators fed, the predators will eventually exhaust their food source. Then they'll begin predation on cats, dogs. They've even been known to attack children and adults. So how do we solve this problem? Well, with trapping. While fur is still pretty desirable around the world, and even in the United States, that's not the main reason we trap. The main reason we trap is to keep predators like coyotes, foxes, even possums and raccoons out of our neighborhoods so we can keep our animals, our pets, and our families safe. But let's talk about fur a little bit. Fur is way more effective at keeping us dry and warm than things like polyester and other plastics and man-made materials. Not only that, fur is biodegradable. It breaks down over time. So that means we're not leaving a bunch of plastic for the next generation to deal with. And while you're maybe still not sold on trapping, here's something else to think about. What happens when all those little bunnies and squirrels have been eaten up by the foxes? Well, the foxes begin to starve. And the more foxes there are, the more starvation is going to happen until these animals are really sick, dying slowly and painfully. Trapping prevents that. So have I sold you on trapping? Maybe? Kinda? 
skulls from an ethical source, trapping, well, sorry to burst your bubble, not all trapping is the same. That's why it takes so much legwork on our end. While all states in the U.S. regulate trapping, not all of them regulate what traps can be used. And some traps are downright cruel. Snares and leg traps cause an animal to die pretty slowly and be stuck there for a couple of days depending on how long it takes the trapper to come back and check on them. The learning lemur only works with trappers that use snap traps. Now you're probably thinking, what's a snap trap? Think about a giant rat trap. A little animal going about his day, walking down his trail or heading towards a piece of delicious bait, and suddenly, boom, fuzzy clouds, harps, angels, pretty painless. By working with ethical trappers, we can assure you that we're getting you more ethical skulls. So if we look at our graph, because of the instant death, we can see that our skulls are pretty ethical, but extremely good quality. Again, this is a personal choice for you to decide on. So you may be thinking to yourself, we've covered it all. Seems pretty simple. Well, there's a couple of more things we should go over. And those things are called fur farms. And in my opinion, they land in very unethical on our graph. While the skulls may be a little bit higher quality than something you'd find in nature or on the side of the road, even in some cases comparable to collector quality, the conditions these animals live in is completely deplorable. They live in a tiny cage their entire life until they're slaughtered for their fur. Their skulls and bones are then sent to a processing facility where they're cleaned up and sent to market. This is why you see a fox skull for $5 on Wish and sometimes even Amazon. We keep away from these skulls at all costs. If you ask me, they land on our graph in extremely unethical and really okay quality. Not really high enough quality to justify all that needless suffering in my opinion. So we've thrown a lot of information at you. And once you've determined your personal ethics for your collection, then we can really start looking into what kind of things we want to collect. And remember, these questions apply to furs, pelts, teeth, claws, taxidermy, wet specimens, and any kind of th product that used to be an animal. So now that you've determined where your ethics lie with your collecting, we can go ahead and think about questions to ask. A really important question, and the first question you should always ask, or are your items ethically sourced? Although we've already addressed that this is an easy question to lie to. Another really good question to ask are what do ethics mean to your dealer? If they're dealing something unethically or if they're just not up to your standards, it's okay to find someone that is. And lastly, trust yourself. We learned a lot here today. And if we didn't cover something that you're concerned about, feel free to ask questions below. I'm John from The Learning Lemur. If you like what you saw here today, don't forget to like and subscribe and keep it weird, conspiracy. They'll sell you skulls all day. Don't ask how they got them. <laughs> She's crying. Don't make me cry. Oh, continuity, Becky. <laughs> okay. Um, I think our theme song is going to be to be. I'm John from the Learned Lemur. I'm John from the Learned Lemur. <laughs>